Astronomers can see through dust and gas clouds with this range, which gives us a better view of the world as a whole. The suggested telescope would be bigger than four meters across and would work in a rotation past the moon. Astronomers would be able to look even deeper into space and figure out what happened in the past thanks to its powerful features. This would give us a much fuller picture of the world as we know it now. The best picture ever seen was just taken by the James Webb Telescope. Come with us as we learn more about the James Webb Telescope and how it might make everything different. How it all began. After the telescope was first suggested in 1996, three groups of scientists and engineers from the public and private sectors got together to see if NASA could actually build the telescope. All three teams came to the same conclusion. The telescope could be built. In 1997, NASA agreed to pay for more studies to improve the technical and financial needs. By 2002, the agency had chosen teams to build the telescope's most important equipment and an advisory group of scientists to help with the building process. The telescope was officially named the James Webb Space Telescope that same year to honor the former head of NASA, who made important contributions to the growth of the Apollo program. When engineers and scientists started building the Webb Telescope in 2004, they had to come up with new technologies and methods to meet the mission's strict science needs. Astronauts could fix and improve Hubble while working from Earth, but Webb would have to do all of its work from too far away for Earth to be able to help. In spite of these problems, the team finished all 18 mirror pieces and put them through a lot of tests to make sure they met the standards. It was finally possible to picture the telescope going into space and doing its job. The James Webb Space Telescope was built from 2012 to 2013. Different parts of the telescope were being built in different places around the world. Building started on Webb's sunshield layers in 2013. These layers protect the telescope from too much heat and let it work well in space. Over the next few years, Webb's different science instruments were put through tough tests with high temperatures and shaking. At the same time, the telescope's 18 separate mirrors were carefully put on its backplane frame. All of these parts were put together and tested at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas in 2017. The telescope and its equipment also went through one last round of environmental tests in a huge thermal vacuum room to make sure they would work properly when they were put into space. Webb was finally sent into orbit around the Earth on December 25th, 2021 at 7.20 a.m. EST. How it works. So how does the telescope really work? People often make space travel sound too easy so when you first hear about it, it might sound like just another camera. That's not the case. It's very different, which is why it took so long to get from idea to start day. The James Webb Telescope is a strong infrared telescope made to look at things in space that are too cool or faint for regular telescopes to see. These are things like stars, galaxies and planets that are just starting to form. The telescope is designed to pick up infrared light which is what these faraway celestial bodies use to give off most of their heat. This lets us learn more about these things. The infrared light can't get through gas and dust, which makes it look cloudy to our eyes. Webb, on the other hand, can see ultraviolet radiation as well as visible light and infrared radiation. This lets it take pictures of things that are hidden by dust and gas giving us a better view of things happening far away in the universe. It is also possible to study the features of things on Earth, like their chemical makeup and temperature, using infrared light. So infrared light is useful in a lot of areas of physics, science and technology. It can help us learn more about how stars, galaxies and other cosmic objects are put together and how they change over time. It can also be used to find signs of chemical pollution in our environment. The telescope has a big collection of mirrors, high-tech image and spectroscopy tools and cutting-edge thermal control systems that let it work in harsh environments like space, 
which you already know is very harsh. Because this camera is meant to go into space by itself, it had to be built so that it could handle anything out there without any help. After the telescope was shot into space and separated from its launch vehicle, it unfolded and started its long trip to its goal, going through a complicated set of steps as it went. There were several important steps in this process, such as going across the moon and breaking up into different pieces. The telescope became one of the most powerful tools of its kind as soon as it was fully set up. How it got to space. Let's take a look at the steps this groundbreaking telescope took to get into space before we talk about why it was so important. The launch was the first thing that had to be done. The solar array was put in place after the launch. Two special pallets were put out on the third day of the trip while the astronauts were still inside the ship. The important sun shields for Webb were stored on these boxes. These shields keep the telescope cool and allow it to work properly in space. The placement of these shields was very important for making sure that the camera could work well during its journey. On the fourth day, the tower that held the instrument package was moved to its final spot and put together. There were a lot of complicated steps in this process, but it all went smoothly because of how the telescope is built. The momentum flap was then raised. The sun's pressure works on the big sun shield, making a force that keeps the telescope stable. Next was the release of the sun shield membrane cover, which showed the tennis court sized sun shields. After everything was set up, the sun shield and mid booms were put in place. The five pieces of the sun shield were then pulled apart. But this isn't the end. When the James Webb telescope was put into space, it had to go through a number of important steps. The second mirror and a frame to keep the smaller mirror in place were put in place on day 10. The main mirror wings were then stretched out on day 13, which made the telescope its full size and shape. After these steps were done, the telescope was ready to start its job of looking at stars and planets far away. What is the real point? What's interesting about the James Webb Telescope is that it wasn't really made to do just one thing. Quite a bit of things should be solved by it. Let's look into this some more. Going back in time. Scientists like Daniel Einstein, an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, can use telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope to go back in time and see galaxies when they were just starting to form. Light moves slowly, so a planet that is far away looks older than it really is. The telescope can look at the early history of galaxies to learn more about how they formed and how they changed over time, because it can see galaxies so far away. Scientists like Einstein can get a full picture of how galaxies form and change over time by looking at different galaxies at different stages of growth. Webb is great for studying faraway galaxies because it can see infrared light. The universe is expanding, which makes the light from these galaxies longer over time. This changes the color of the light from visible or ultraviolet to infrared. Webb is very good at picking up infrared signals because it is big and cold. This lets it see much farther into space than other telescopes. This makes it possible for it to see galaxies as they grow and change, taking pictures of how they change over time. We can learn more about how galaxies form and grow thanks to Webb. This helps us understand the world better as a whole, putting together what we know. Researchers look at stars from the exact point where they were born. Stars are born from thick clouds of gas and dust that are called stellar nurseries. Because these clouds are so thick, visible light can't get through them. This makes it hard for scientists to use regular binoculars to study these areas. But infrared light can get through the dusty clouds more easily than visible light. This lets scientists see into the heart of these star nurseries in a way that other scientists can't. Because the Webb telescope can see infrared light, scientists will be able to study these areas in much more detail than they could before. 
An infrared astronomer at the University of Arizona named Marcia Reek is the main director of one of Webb's cameras. She says this is because red light has a longer wavelength and can pass through the dust in our atmosphere better than blue light. Besides that, infrared light can go deeper into dusty galaxies than visible light. Because of this effect, the sun looks redder at night than during the day at the same time. Because it can see IR better, Hubble has only been able to study the formation of stars on a surface level. The wider range of infrared bands on Webb, on the other hand, will let scientists see deeper into the dust and learn more about how stars are born and grow. It's hard to see black holes because they can trap light, which makes them some of the most strange things in the world. On the other hand, we can see how black holes affect the stars and galaxies around them. Scientists have been able to study different aspects of black holes using telescopes like X-ray telescopes. For example, they have been able to study how the violent shredding of nearby stars makes the area very hot and energetic near black holes. With the launch of NASA's Webb telescope, its infrared equipment will allow scientists to learn more about black holes. They can learn more about black holes and the complicated physics that happens near them by looking at the cooler gases and stars that spin around them. Scientists are still studying black holes, even though they don't seem to be visible. They will continue to be an important area of study in the future as well. When you look at stars in thick, dusty parts of space, it can be hard to see them because the dust blocks your view. But because it can see very well in the infrared, the Webb telescope will be able to see through this cloud of dust and give scientists useful information about the places where stars are found. We can learn more about the mass and size of these star-hungry black holes, as well as how they eat stars by looking at their temperatures, speeds and chemical makes up. Through collecting this information, we can learn more about the basic processes that cause galaxies to grow and change across the universe. Finally, this information will help us understand how stars like our Sun formed and changed over time. It will give us answers to questions we didn't think we could have. Different Worlds with Life the James Webb Telescope can find chemical signs of life in the atmospheres of other worlds by using infrared colors. Some of these signs are chemicals that make a place habitable, like carbon dioxide and oxygen, that are released by living processes like photosynthesis. Scientists can look for signs of life on other worlds and figure out if they might be habitable by studying these chemicals. Webb can find the chemical signatures of important living molecules like methane and water, which could mean that there is life on other worlds. Webb's very sensitive tools will also let scientists learn more than ever before about the atmospheres of these otherworldly worlds. Overall, this huge new camera is going to change the way we think about the world and might even help us find proof of life beyond Earth. The Webb Space Telescope is very strong and has two tools that will help scientists study the bands of infrared signals coming from worlds outside of our solar system. Scientists can learn a lot about other worlds by using this knowledge to figure out what chemicals are in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Exoplanet science is still a fairly new area. The first exoplanet was found in 1992, which was a big step forward. Since then, scientists have found thousands of new worlds in the universe. Many of these planets have strange features that we don't see on Earth. Exoplanets are very far away, worlds that humans have only recently learned about. Our present technology means that we don't know much about them. We will be able to see these exoplanets much better with new space telescopes like NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. We will also be able to learn more about their qualities and traits. Webb is built to work in space, where it can watch infrared light without being affected by Earth's atmosphere or surface radiation. This is different from observations made on Earth, which are limited by our atmosphere. New and important findings. 
Now, a lot of people are already talking about how cool the James Webb Telescope is. Let's look more closely at some of the most important ones. Find out about real extrasolar planets. The goal of building the JWST was to find worlds that circle stars other than our own Sun. The JWST has been able to directly identify light from exoplanets using a number of different techniques, which shows that this feature is working well so far. One example is that it can take pictures of Jupiter-class planets like HIP 65426 using the transit method, which sees the planet as it moves in front of its star and blocks some of its light. Along with this method, the transit method used by JWST has also shown that the atmospheres of two exoplanets about the size of Jupiter contain water and carbon dioxide. These findings show that the JWST is working better than expected, which lets us study exoplanets in more detail and with more accuracy. Overall, these results show that the JWST can not only study planets outside of our solar system, but it can also give us a huge amount of information, information we could only hope for before. The effect of Doppler. Next are galaxies that are very far away. Astronomers look at things in the universe that are farther away and see light that has been bent toward longer wavelengths. This effect is called the Doppler effect, and it happens because the world is getting bigger. NASA built the James Webb Space Telescope to take advantage of this effect. It can find the universe's oldest galaxies, which formed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Astronomers may now be able to study the very beginning of the universe's past, after their first views with the JWST have already found many possible galaxies from these early times. With this telescope, and other cutting-edge technologies working together, we might be able to answer questions that were once thought to be too hard to even try to answer. The Rings of Neptune, the picture that is clearer than any other in history, is finally here. We talked about how the James Webb Telescope just took the best picture ever at the beginning of this movie. Now that you know how the telescope works on the inside, let's talk about the picture that is making scientists go crazy. The James Webb Space Telescope just took the best picture of Neptune's rings. These rings haven't been seen in such detail since NASA's Voyager 2 mission took a picture of them more than 30 years ago. Webb's cameras not only showed the ice giant planet's bright, narrow rings, but they also showed that these rings are made up of millions of dust-sized particles that scatter light in different ways. The high-resolution picture of Neptune also shows us more about the planet's complicated weather, like the long bands of clouds and rough storms. Scientists are still looking into these features to learn more about how the planet's atmosphere changes over time. Webb is not only a great science tool for studying the world, but it is also a powerful tool for studying Earth. Planets far away, like Neptune, have atmospheres and weather trends that scientists can study to learn more about how weather works on Earth. Webb is going to change the way we think about planetary systems all over the galaxy and beyond because of its high resolution and sensitivity. We can't wait to see what new things it finds in the years to come. What do you think about the James Webb Telescope's ability to move forward? Write your answer in the box below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. See you in the next one.